Some people say that the e-bike can give you the exact same fitness and the power of an Olympic athlete purely by pressing a button on your handlebars. Well, I'm here today at Dolby Forest to race Grant Ferguson. He's a six-time national champion. He's an ex-Olympic rider. He's really got a lot of skill and a lot of fitness on the bike. So I'm gonna see if this is a match for the e-bike. So we're here today in Dalby Forest. This course was actually last used in 2010 as a World Cup cross country track. Names like Nino Schurter and Julian Absalon raced here and they actually finished a one second sprint between them, Nino Schurter taking the win. But we're here today to meet someone just as fast as those guys. This is Grant Ferguson, super excited to meet him. Hey. How you doing Grant, you all right? Good, thanks Chris, how are you? Nice, yeah, all good. Been doing a bit of research, Grant, and I can see you're a pretty fast guy on a bike, right? Yeah, thanks, yeah. How many times national champ? Uh, six times, so, yeah. Cyclocross national and champ? Cyclocross as well, so, uh, yeah. No, I've done a few races in my time. Damn, I'm starting to sweat a bit here. I reckon I've really got my work cut out for me today. And the other thing you've done is the Olympics, right? Yeah, in 2016, raced uh, Olympics cross-country mountain bikes, so, uh, <laughs> done a few races yeah. and I've also raced here. Yeah, yeah. The track you're on about, I raced here as a junior, so I watched that race. Yeah, you, so you you're local here as well? I'm not a local, but I've definitely spent, spent at least time. one race here a year so <laughs> for, since then. So Cool. This machine looks pretty trick as well. Yeah. Super light. You're looking pretty trim as well. <laughs> definitely going to be a hard race today. It'll be interesting to see how the e-bike goes against this machine. But yeah, let's take a look at the different bikes. This is my race bike for this year. So it's a Scott Spark RC900 uh, carbon frame, 29 inch wheels. And then we've got a uh, 100mm front and rear suspension on it. So pretty minimal. Yeah, pretty minimal. We've got uh, the new SRAM EGO 12 speed group set down there with some Hope chain set, Hope brakes, yeah. and um, I'm running 2.35 skinny tires, now. pretty lightweight tires. Yeah. And I noticed you're not running a dropper. What's the reason uh, for that? No, I'm not. I'm, uh, I have got a dropper at home, but uh -huh. for now I'm, I'm just on the on the current set, mainly for a weight point of view, but weight I might point. look at a dropper at some point. What's your guessings on weight uh, for this thing? 10 kilos-ish. Like 10 kilos, literally little finger under the saddle. I pick this thing up. This is like a super lightweight machine. It's a little bit lighter than my e-bike actually. Just a little bit. Well, Grant, this is my Canyon Spectral on 8.0. It's obviously an e-bike. It's got 29er front wheel, 27.5 rear, uh, SRAM Eagle. It's powered by a Shimano E8000 motor, 250 watts of power. It's probably way more than what you got, right? Mm -hmm. 500 watt hour <laughs> battery, size large, aluminium frame. And this thing weighs in at about 23.1 kilos. And you're more than welcome to pick it up with your little finger, just like we did with your bike. So that's double mine. Yeah, double the weight of your bike. You got that or not? That's not happening, that, but yeah, that's a, that's a weighty one. Good luck. So the course that we're going to be using here today is the Dolby Forest World Cup Cross Country Track. It's four miles long, it's a black graded trail, man-made, but you know a little bit more about this track, right Grant? Yeah, there's there's a couple of steep climbs, there's some technical descents and it's a bit muddy today, so it's going to be a, yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be an interesting test. Definitely. So the format that we're going to use here today is one lap, starting here, racing around the trail, first one back here wins, man versus machine. So here we are at the start of my first race against an Olympic athlete. Four miles of black terrain coming up. E-bike versus Cross Country Pro. You ready, Grant? Yeah, I'm ready. Count of five. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. See you at the finish. <laughs> Not if I see you first. <laughs> ah, I'm on my limiter. <laughs>
Ah. 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 intense. I've never dug so deep for such a long time in my life. He is super fast. So quick downhill, so quick across the hill. This bike where it's hitting the limiter was the restricting factor. 60 mile an hour, I was down where you could dig in and get like 20. But he's an amazing rider. Up and downhill. Nice one Grant. You look a bit fresher than me. Oh, you look fresh. Oh, man, yeah. I feel a bit sick. Oh. Yeah, it's the training plan, it's different. Oh, I didn't think I was gonna get it like halfway round. No, that hill there. Yeah, the hill. Oh. And I tried to come with you a bit on that climb and I was like, oh no. <laughs> you know, on the downhills, like you're flying down those. Like, and this thing was on the limiter, I couldn't go any quicker. And a couple of wrong turns as well. Yeah, that wrong turn there, so yeah, you know, I wouldn't have probably got back in front. Yeah. I think that was the hardest ride. I've got the hardest race I've done. What was that, four miles? <laughs> but that was pretty intense. I wouldn't like oh. to do a load of laps like you guys. <laughs> yeah, six laps. <laughs> <laughs> Good work, but yeah, hell of a workout. And I want to go back to the shed to analyse all the details of where Grant was faster and where I was faster. So overall, Grant did a 17 minutes and four seconds for the whole lap. And then the e-bike did it in a 16 minutes, 24 seconds. So Grant was 40 seconds slower than the e-bike around the whole lap. But where was that time made? Where was it lost? Where was the e-bike faster? Where was Grant faster? Okay, so the first segment I wanna take a look at is the start loop. Basically we had a sprint start into the woods, a short loop which was fairly flat, flowy downhill sections, little tech downhill followed by a short punchy climb. And this was actually where Grant overtook me for the first time. He unleashed that awesome climbing power and shot past me, slingshot me out of the berm from the downhill before. Long climb, but I managed just to catch him up right at the end of the section and overtake him right at the top of the climb. Times of that section were me on 2 minutes 50 and Grant was on a 2.51, so really, really close. This led us into a flat field sprint. Just as I overtook Grant, I managed to hold the lead across the field section. I was right on the limiter, so I was going 25 kph. I thought Grant would shut me down. Again, it was super close with only one second in it, 33 seconds for me, 34 seconds for Grant. Then I only threw away my lead by taking a wrong turn into the next section of trail. 
but I knew something special was coming up. It was the infamous Dolby Rock Garden. I come to this full speed. I managed to smash through it, 23 seconds. The e-bike really held its speed, whereas Grant managed to go in 25 seconds, so I made a couple of seconds up. I was slowly reining Grant in, but I knew my favorite part of the trail was coming up, the gully. Uh, I again fluffed the section up. I had to do a wrong turn, drop back into the trail from a dead stop, so lost a bit of speed there and a lot of time as well. I managed to do a 52 seconds smashing through there on the e-bike, whereas Grant still flew down there really impressively with 54 seconds. So again, another couple of seconds made up. The famous Medusa's climb was coming up and I knew this was my chance to finally get on Grant's back wheel. I couldn't catch him. Grant had held a load in the tank from the previous downhill section and then just smashed it up this climb in a really impressive one minute, 13 seconds. I come in really tired from the downhill before where I'd made some time up. I didn't have anything left in the tank and I was four seconds slower up the climb than Grant. But I knew something really special was coming up where the e-bike would really shine. It was a really steep uphill climb. Bit rocky, but if I put my work in here, this is where I could pull up some big time. Grant managed to do it in a one minute 30 and I managed to do it in a one minute nine seconds. So 21 seconds was made up by the e-bike. After a short descent, a flat fire road connected the next part of the trail. A flat fire road on a restricted e-bike is never gonna be much fun. Straight away, I was on a 25 kph limit. He managed to do a 54 seconds along there, whereas I managed to do a one minute and three seconds. So he managed to pull nine seconds back along that fire road alone. After that, I've come into a wooded section with a really short, steep technical climb. Really greasy with a lot of rocks load of different lines there too grant managed to do it in 14 seconds whereas the e-bike managed to power up it in 11 seconds so three seconds difference there from then on it was the final push to the finish on our sighting lap this is where grant told me this is where you really need to dig deep and make that effort if you're behind and lagging it's a flat wooded section e-bike again was right on the limiter and i was really fearing grant would be holding some in the tank and would pull me back right at the finish. So I managed to do that section in one minute 35 seconds, whereas Grant managed to do one minute 44 seconds. So a little bit slower for Grant, but then I come into the final finish section, looked over and Grant wasn't there, the race was won. So there we go, we've just shown that an e-bike can actually beat an Olympic athlete in a head-to-head -head race. I know what you guys are thinking, you're thinking what can an Olympic athlete do on an e-bike? And this is what is capable. Go on, Grant, give us something to sit. So Grant's time on the e-bike was really impressive. Yeah, he beat me, but not quite as badly as what I thought he would. He managed to smash a whole lap out in 15 minutes, 11 seconds, beating me by one minute, 13. Here at Dolby, the course is quite flat, meaning that the e-bike isn't a super advantage. For the e-bike to be at a massive advantage, it needs to be steep tech downhills with steep tech uphills as well. Then it would really smash the cross-country racer. But vice versa, if the course was flatter and a bit more flowing, then the cross-country racer would probably win. So many variables, but today here at Dolby, we proved that machine can beat man. But if you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to check out Steve racing himself on a uh, downhill bike versus an e-bike. Uh, that's a real cool video that Steve done. Don't forget, drop us some comments in the box below. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBM by clicking the globe in the middle. And we're off to the pub, right? Yep. Mineral water? Probably, yeah. Let's get some pints. <laughs>